good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Andrew Penzi. I'm the team leader of the Parks Capital team for the Bronx, Bronx team. Um, my team is composed primarily of landscape architects who design these projects. We work very closely with um, a wide range of professionals, including foresters, horticulturalists, um, community folk, and uh, to make sure we understand your concerns and design these projects accordingly. Um, I'm, and then we also have uh, a construction division of, um, of engineers who supervise the construction to ensure that these designs are built properly. I'm joined here tonight by uh, Deputy Commissioner Blackman, several other members of the Parks Department and Planning uh, units. Uh, we're here tonight to address your concerns. I know there's, there have been a lot of concerns on this trail, and um, hopefully we can alleviate uh, a lot of the concerns that are out there and clarify exactly what we're doing. Um, this is a design that, um, uh, so this is the Putnam Rail Trail. This is uh, the site of the old Putnam Rail Line, which was a commuter rail line that ended in the 1950s. And um, tonight's presentation, we're going to clarify the design intent that, that, we, uh, that we have. We're going to show how this project hopefully uh, will be a tremendous benefit to the users of the park and uh, to explain also the environmental benefits uh, that we'll be offering. Uh, this project is funded through a federal transportation grant with matching funds by the mayor. So federal transportation grants are provided for um, a greenway connection, a connection of an existing transportation route. And we have to form a connection from, one point to, from point A to point B. And we'll show you how we did that. Uh, this is a design or an excerpt from the design that was previously shown to the uh, community board. It was approved by the Public Design Commission and also by state DOT who uh, administers the federal grants. Okay, so, yes. uh, so here's the rail line in red. It travels through the core of Van Cortlandt Park and it really is the spine of this park. Um, it makes connections to the south, to the Marshalloo Greenway and to, to Broadway. Uh, there's a greenway there as well. And then to the north, this connects to the Cross County Greenway, which extends some 47 miles up through Westchester and Putnam counties as a paved greenway trail. South, south County Greenway, excuse me. Um, uh, the section through Van Cortland Park is approximately one and a half miles long. So I have some existing conditions to show you. I'm guessing most of you are familiar with the trail, but just in case you're not, uh, the, the slide on the left is the existing parking lot at the golf, uh, golf course, just off of Broad, um, I'm sorry, Van Cortland Park South. And that's where the trail will be connecting. On the right slide, you see that's the entrance to the trail from the parking lot. The trail continues north here. Uh, you can see the lake on the right. It's really a beautiful spot, and we hope to enhance the scenic beauty uh, through this project. You can see, the, and the right picture is a very interesting shot. It shows the existing railroad ties on the left from the old railroad. The trail weaves back and forth across the ties, but uh, stays right adjacent to the, tri to the railroad ties, continuing north. Uh, the ties, you can see, they, they do pose a tripping hazard. Uh, to, to people, and they do have uh, contamination in the ties, and we will be addressing that, and I'll talk about that more later. Um, you can see how it's a rather open uh, area right now, and we'll be replenishing this with, uh, fortifying it with many trees. We're going to be planting uh, in the neighborhood of 420 trees, new trees. So I just wanted to clarify that because I know that was an item there was a little confusion on. We will be planting 420 plus new trees. Um, so that will, they will grow in and help the canopy here. Um, let's see. And I, yeah, I just ask that you hold all comments at the end and let me go through. Hopefully, I'll address your concerns and um, we can address questions after. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So this slide shows uh, some muddy conditions that you encounter after a rain event, and uh, I'm a father of two young children, so I know what it's like to want to bring your children in to experience a bird watching habitat such as this and to not be able to get there because 
you know, a two-year-old child can't walk one and a half miles down the screenway. So, um, and pushing them on those strollers with little wheels is not exactly easy. And maybe, maybe a few years ago I could have carried them, but n no longer. So, um, so that's a goal of the project too, to uh, be able to bring families into this zone and enhance uh, this zone for people of all abilities. On the left slide, this is actually going back towards the parking lot that we showed you in the first slide. There's the old uh, Van Cortlandt Park train station. It's deteriorated, and I'll show you some plans that we have to uh, help enliven that structure. And to the slide on the right, that's all the way at the northern end at the county line where the greenway continues through Westchester County as a paved asphalt greenway. Uh, we're hoping that our contract, although it will, we are proposing pavement, and you'll, you'll see that, um, we hope to uh, enhance the character and make, we don't want it to be quite as open as this. We're hoping to make a more intimate experience with nature through our project. And some of the sections that we have hopefully will express that. So this is a, um, a plan view of a, the typical trail uh, that we proposed for the, for the main trail. We have a 10 foot wide asphalt path down the center, which follows the route of the old rail line. And this does several things. It, one, it brings, like I said, uh, it allows transportation through the park. It'll allow cyclists to make that connection. It allows families and people who, who otherwise wouldn't be able to get in to experience uh, this beautiful area to come in and experience it firsthand in the center of the park. And also, the, although we will be removing the ties that I showed you in the picture earlier, uh, this, the asphalt acts as a suitable cap material. So otherwise, if it was a permeable surface, you get leachate running out from the contaminated materials that could uh, infiltrate into the stream, uh, an adjacent stream. Asphalt is considered a cap material that would uh, help prevent leachate from running out. Uh, to the right side of the trail, we just have a two-foot buffer material of, this will be a, wild, a woodland wildflower seed mix. And again, this is what I was talking about, about enhancing the user experience and getting down to nature and really helping to uh, enliven that. And so this will help beautify the trail and serve as a buffer. And on the other side, because uh, we understand there are a lot of people who like to run on a soft surface. It might be better for your ankles and joints. So we're providing a three-foot earthen jogging path. This will be essentially a compacted earth path. So we're hoping to address the needs of all here by providing the uh, asphalt path for the wheeled vehicles and the earthen path for those who uh, prefer to jog on a softer surface. And um, the, I just want to talk a little bit about the asphalt. Maybe we can go to the next slide and talk about it on the next one, Steve. So here's just a cross-section of the same uh, plan I was just showing you. A three-foot earthen path, 10-foot of asphalt, and then a two-foot buffer with some wildflower mix. Um, the, uh, let's see, let's skip, skip to my, uh, my notes on this one. So I just want to talk a little bit about the asphalt. Asphalt is a maintainable product. That's something, the you know, Parks Department, we don't have a lot of maintenance staff, and asphalt is very durable. It'll last for a long time without any concern of rutting, things of that nature. Uh, any sort of soft surface, as you saw from the existing trail conditions, they do deteriorate. And, um, you know, although items like motorized dirt bikes are not allowed in the park, we can't control it if one does come through occasionally. And a motorized dirt bike, something of that nature, could destroy the, um, a soft surface trail in one use. Uh, you know, it, that could be it. You'll have rutting, and it'll deteriorate from there. Versus the asphalt, this is going to last for years and years and um, without, without much maintenance at all. Also, asphalt is a pavable material. So um, if the path was able to be paved, um, well, that is the point. Uh, okay, see if you can skip ahead. Uh, this is... So then these are some uh, detailed views of some of the uh, plans, that the areas that we're enhancing. This is the entrance um, to the trail right off the golf course parking lot. To the left would be the shade structure from the train. And this will be an accessible entrance coming up this uh, paved path to meet our proposed greenway. 
Uh, this is the existing conditions of the shade structure. You can see in the um, bottom right, if you look at the footings, uh, the post of those structures there are severely deteriorated, and we propose to be reconstructing that. And this would be the proposed condition. This would be the southern terminus of our Greenway project. Um, and this, you can just see from the, uh, I think this is a pretty accurate depiction of what we're trying to do here. We're trying to really enliven this area. And I think this will be bringing people in. It serves as a resting point at the southern end of the trail. And um, you know, we expect in much increased usage by doing these improvements. Um, the Parks Department, we only had, um, the funds we had only go so far. So what we, the way we uh, handle that in our contracts is we put in ad alternates. So we have a base bid amount for all the work that we could afford. And then anything beyond that, we throw in as an ad alternate. Just in case bids come in low, it gives us an opportunity to do more, more work and award the work. So in this slide here, the, um, the supports for the shade structure would, are all included in the base bid to stabilize that, to do all the enhancements on the ground that you see. That's all in the base bid. The roof of the structure is in the ad alternate. So if the bids come in low, we'll do the roof as well and make those improvements. Uh, moving further up, these are some pylons. Um, this is a little spur off the trail. It is a secondary path. It's not the main uh, bikeway. So in this area, uh, the, the pylons were from, they were used as test, um, they were testing the granite from the Grand Central Station when they were building the Grand Central Station. So they made these pylons there to do as uh, test materials. Uh, the pylons are deteriorating, the capstones are falling off, and they do need some restoration. Uh, what we're proposing is actually a stone screening path in this section, and the stone screening can be used here because, again, it's not a primary route of travel. Uh, people could still get within view of these structures on the main path and have their transportation and experience, um, and then the stone screening in this area would uh, able them to get up close to the pylons and uh, experience them. Those are the pylons and uh, the proposed condition. And then this is at the northern uh, connection of the county line. We have some uh, granite improvements I'll show you in the next slide. Uh, but this is where our greenway ends and connects to the uh, northern greenway uh, in Westchester. And this is looking back from Westchester County, a proposed view of what our greenway we hope to look like. We're going to um, enrich this area with uh, lots of native planting on either side uh, to help bring that experience of nature closer. Uh, we have a nice granite entryway to define the limits of this project and welcome people to, uh, to the Bronx and to uh, the Putnam Trail. And uh, again, we hope this will an increase birding and activities. Uh, we don't, um, I think it's important to note that uh, the, if we did any other surface material, such as a stone screening or any other soft surface, it would have really the same impact because it requires the same amount, if not more, of excavation. It requires um, the same amount of clearing that you would need to do a trail of this nature. So the impact really is the same. So the benefit you're getting of the asphalt is the accessibility, the durability, uh, while maintaining the habitat. And then these are some just slides of uh, typical proposed plantings. We're proposing native plantings, again, to help, help beautify the trail and enhance that experience. Again, more of the same. And that's really it. Um, let me just make sure I didn't have any. Okay.